And hello, everyone. Welcome today to Viewpoint. Have you ever found yourself kind of in a bad situation? As the old saying goes, between a rock and a hard place. Maybe that's where you are today. Abraham found himself in that situation, but God miraculously brought him through and he blessed him. The same God, for our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our same God can bring you through whatever you're facing. You can put your reliance, your trust, and your confidence in the great God of heaven because there is nothing too hard for God. Isn't that good news today? Hi, everyone. I'm Carlton Duck, a part of Viewpoint and the pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church. I would love to see you this Sunday at GBC, 411 Blue Ridge Street. Easy to find, one block off of Lakeside Drive. That's Route 221. And we're near what uh, many of you knew as Lynchburg College. And it's the University of Lynchburg, one block up from that. Not hard to find. You can put that in your GPS and it'll take you right to the front door. Google search it. It'll take you right to the front door. And you come right on in. No steps to climb. Nothing of that nature. Right on into the church. And you will enjoy inspiring music and the great people here at Gethsemane. And also the blessings of the Lord and the preaching of God's word. It is amazing what God's doing in this church. But we do serve an amazing God, don't we? And there's nothing too hard for him. 411 Blue Ridge is our location. Our service times this Sunday is um, 9.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. And it's about an hour. It's an hour and 10 minute worship service. You'll enjoy good music, inspiring music. And then the stern preaching of God's word that will encourage, bless you, and lift you up. I know your heart will be mightily blessed of the Lord. And we want to encourage you to please go to our website. There's a great amount of information there for you about this ministry. As a matter of fact, on the front page, you can get a glimpse of what our sanctuary and worship facility looks like. We've got a beautiful campus here at Gethsemane, well manicured lawns and Just uh, beautiful flowers, and it is always an amazing, amazing blessing to come to Gethsemane. And uh, you can come and you can partake of that. But that website is AliveGBC.com. You'll see it right there at the foot of the screen. And you can go to that site. You can do several things. You can learn about our ministry. You can also go to our YouTube account and look at some of our programming. You can also... uh, Look, go to uh, our Facebook page, and we are on every Wednesday night at 5 and 7. 5 is what's called Topic Talk. 7 is a prayer time, live prayer time. You can put your prayer request on, and we'll pray for you. And then, of course, you can go to the very foot of the front page of our website, and you can find out about how you can receive a digital bulletin every week. And I'm not just talking about a one page, or this is a a plethora of information for you that you really will enjoy. It'll tell you about our 12 for 21 program. It'll tell you about our kids programs that we're doing. Not only the kitty care kit that's put out there for kids every Sunday in our ministry when they come in, but also the other things that we're doing, the incentive programs. It's just so much. And I'm not even going to try to capsulize that in this program, but you just, you can go to that, but there's something else you can look at in that digital bulletin. You can receive that every week on your cell phone. It's very simple. You just follow two instructions. It's on that, and you can receive it every week. There's nothing else you have to do. You can just enjoy and be blessed, and it will keep you informed about what's happening in the Lord's work here at Gethsemane. Well, I'm so glad again that you're with us today, and we want to talk today about Between a Rock and a Hard Place. That's actually taken from the 22nd chapter of the book of Genesis, It's the first 14 verses, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to read all those verses, but I'm going to go down to verse 14. I want to read that because it's important. There's a declaration in that about who our God is. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Now, we know Jehovah Jireh means, of course, our God will provide, and he is a providing God. I'm reminded of what the Apostle Paul told us in the book of Philippians. But my God shall supply your every need according to his riches and glory. 
There's not a need that you can have that God can't take care of it. The first most vital need that you have in your life, the imperative need in your life is salvation. That you need the Lord Jesus Christ just not to get to heaven. You need him in this life and especially in these days in which we're living and the conditions which we're living under. You know, God allows trials and tests in our lives. He does that in order today so that it will reveal where we are in our spiritual journey. Many times we may lack in our trust, our confidence, and our faith walk with God. And uh, God will take those areas of our life, even through those trials and hard places, and he will use that to strengthen us to make us stronger for the trials that are ahead. You're not getting out of this life without trials. Whether you're lost or saved, it comes to every person. But he does this basically for three reasons, if you would. And I jotted these things down. One, correcting. Understand whatever happens to be wrong in our life, God can use this as a means of correcting us and getting us back where we need to be spiritually in our walk, in our relationship with him. So, you know, the Lord knows, listen to what I'm going to tell you. The Lord knows what's best for us. We many times think we know that what's best. We don't. Because many times we avoid God and many times we run from God. Jonah did it and he wound up in the school of whales. But God delivered him. He provided for him. But understand there's times in our life that we drift from the Lord. We've seen people do it in our ministry. I've had it happen to me in my spiritual life. It happens to all of us. We may as well admit it. But God has a way of pulling our attention back to himself. Secondly, today, it is a correcting whatever needs to be revealed and corrected in our life. So it's a revealing process that God reveals to us and shows us our shortfalls and where we're missing the point, missing the mark, and where we can then go to the Lord and get those measures corrected and get back on track. And there's a third one that he uses, and that's strengthening us and, and wherever any area of our life that we're weak. And you know, honestly, we all need the strength of the Lord, don't we? We cannot get by without it. But I'm glad he's the God that will renew your strength, refresh your strength, revive your strength, and he will give you strength to go through, to get through whatever you encounter in life, because he's a God who provides. So this could mean today that you you may find yourself between a rock and a hard place, and you're going through some uh, trials in your life, and you need the direction and the leadership of the Lord. So God will use that hard place in your life to do something significant. It's where he really works in our lives and does a, a grand work. We need that because we need that fashioning that he does in our life, that correcting, that revealing, and that strengthening, and that process that God works. I know it's not always pleasant, and I would not stand here and look at this camera and tell you that, oh, it's just a piece of cake. No, it's hard places sometimes, but you've got not to just not to just look at the point, place, and time that you're in. You've got to look down the road by faith and know that God's going to work something amazing in your life. So no one likes a trial. I don't, you don't, who does? And uh, you realize, though, none of us are immune from trials. What are trials? You know, you think about that question today, and I jotted this down. Trials are adverse circumstances that God allows in our lives to both identify where we are spiritually as well as to prepare us for where he wants us to go or where he wants us to be. You just can't stay like you are. You're either growing for God or you're regressing. You're either trusting or you're losing your trust. You don't lose your salvation. Don't misunderstand that. Uh, You have to do what David uh, gave us in Psalm 51, where he said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. So we can take, you know, uh, comfort in knowing and relying today that Trials must pass through God's hands and uh, before reaching us. And God already sees the end result before we even are approaching that trial. So what do you do when basically you're caught between 
this position a rock and a hard place. I've heard that term all the years as a kid and growing up and people always talking about, well, you know, so-and-so, they kind of between a rock and a hard place, or they may even said themselves, we were between a rock and a hard place. And I think we've all been there and we may even be there now. You may be in that situation. That place that we find today will, you know, God wants to do something. And I think that's one of the key elements that we have to look at today. And we have to ask ourselves, so you can let the trial really just torment you and destroy you. Or you can say, God is working something in this and I am not going to give up. I'm not going to get bitter. I'm not going to turn away from him. I'm going to put my faith and my trust in the Lord. So when God wants to really reveal reveal today uh, the real condition of your heart and, and through that he can empower you today to know that he's the one that will bring you through the pains of these trials but the end result is you're going to be a stronger and a better Christian for the cause of Christ. So in Genesis 10, 22 is a story of very familiar story we all know about Abraham and Isaac. And earlier we found that God had made a covenant with Abraham. You remember that. And this has been called the Abrahamic covenant. And so through this covenant, God did something. God promised that he would bless Abraham and that Abraham would be a blessing to others. That is a tremendous, uh, that's a tremendous testimony, isn't it? To know that you have been blessed of the Lord and that blessing that you have received is that you can share that blessing with others today. But notice God's blessings did not stop at his blessing on Abraham. God today has a blessing for each of us, doesn't he? So God's covenant, God's covenant means God's promise went on to declare that others would be blessed through Abraham. That being the case, what does a blessing then in the Bible mean? What does a blessing, you know, we talk about, oh, I'm blessed. What well, do you realize what you're saying? Do you understand when you're talking about a blessing, what it means today? A blessing in the Bible means to experience and listen to this. You experience joy and you extend the favor of God uh, in your life. And so understand today, a blessing is brought to you that you can enjoy so for every burden that you're facing, there's another B word attached to it called a blessing. God will bring a blessing to you, enjoyment to your life, and he will extend. Oh, this is good. God then is extending his favor to you and I. And that's a great identifying mark that you are a child of the king. So God does not want us today to be in a a cul-de-sac Christianity today when our blessings are with us. He, he wants us to let those blessings, listen, those blessings are to flow through us and to touch others' lives today. God wants us to be today a, oh, here's a good way to put it. You know, uh, if you're in the building trade or in the electrical trade, you have a, a device called a conduit. And that conduit acts as a means of carrying things through. We become conduit Christians today when all of the blessings are extended to us that we then take those blessings and extend them to others. Isn't it great to bless someone? I mean, even a little small thing. I was going in a place today and, and I opened the door and held it for a person to come in. And they said, thank you. You said, well, that's no big deal, preacher. Well, it was a blessing. It was extending the kindness of God to someone else. I mean, there are many ways that we can do this. God's miracle for Abraham and Sarah. Let's look at that for a moment. You know, God's covenant with Abraham would require a miracle just to get it going. So that being the case, by the time Sarah was told that uh, she was going to have a son, both Abraham and Sarah were, they were in their 90s. Can you imagine that? Having a baby and you're 90 some years old. So the the uh, early 90s is not typically the place where, you know, or the prime time where married life is having children. You, I mean, come on, we know that, right? So Sarah had a little bit of a different, difficult time in believing God's promises. And she even laughed. But God is not limited by age. 
He's not limited by energy. He's not limited by our opinion. He's not in his, in, uh, limited by what we think. He's not limited by anything today. He is not limited by whatever thing that courses through our finite mind. You've got to understand today, God can do anything and there's nothing too hard for him. Read Jeremiah thirty-two seventeen. So what happens? What what happened was that Abraham was born just like God said would happen. So God then made a re, an amazing request, and we're just kind of coursing through the story here. God made a, an amazing request to I, to Abraham, and from Genesis twenty-two, and the Bible tells us that God did tempt. Now, when He used that word tempt. Understand that word tempt in what he records there in Genesis 22. He is saying, God then did test Abraham. What was he testing, Pastor? He was testing his faith, his reliance. He was testing his trust in the Lord. And notice Abraham, but you know the amazing thing too about God, he already knows our frame. He knows every detail of our life. But Abraham, the man of faith, now finds himself between what? A rock and a hard place because of what God has called him to do. So Abraham is in a conflict on all sides. Now, you know, he didn't try to reason with God or play let's make a deal or spin the wheel or anything of that nature. It's not because of any sin that he had committed that he was put in this position. Abraham is in a conflict because of God. So Abraham basically was being uh, asked to give up what he had wanted most. You know, today, sometimes you've got to come to the realization. We have nothing. But if you've got the Lord, you've got everything. And you cannot measure a person's success by the houses and their properties and and by their their vehicles or their income or their dress or anything of that nature today. Really, we're not in a position to judge anyone, are we? But realizing today we stereotype people and we try to put them into this position. You know what happened to Abraham? It's the same thing that happens to us. God wants us to surrender all. That's what he wanted Abraham to do. Surrender all. When you surrender all, it means today, oh, God's going to take everything at your own. No. It means today God is looking for your reliance, your trust, and your faith in him. So when you surrender all, you know, all to Jesus, I surrender, I surrender all. And that's what we have to come to in life. And sometimes God permits these things to happen to get us in a position of surrender. So what about those times when God asked you to give back to him? What you once told him was, you know, what you wanted. But is it everything that we have on loan from God? You think about that. It's one thing to say, all I have is yours, God. It's easy to say that, really. It's another thing when we actually mean it today and we don't get a chip on our shoulder because God then brings a trial into our life. We don't walk away from God. Abraham didn't walk away from God. Note what Abraham did. Abraham drew closer to God. And that's what surrender does. Surrendering draws us closer to the Lord so that we indeed can hear that small, still voice and that we can know that leadership that he is placing before us today. You may found yourself today in some places of spiritual conflict with God. You may have gone through those hard places and tough times. But listen, you knew God was asking you to sacrifice something on his altar. And I could tell you some of the accounts in my life. I'm telling you, one day, I wish I had the time to sit down and write a book. Recently in church, and just here a few weeks ago, I shared one of my life lessons way back when I was in the Air Force and I was stationed in Thailand during the Vietnam conflict. And I shared with that congregation what occurred and what happened and how that God called back home a 14-month-old son that my wife and I had. I'm on the other side of the world. Can you imagine that? Well, I can tell you some more things too, but I'm not going to do that. The fact of the matter is today, we've got to learn that God, and were you bitter then, Pastor? Yes, I was. 
But you know what? God then worked that bitterness out of me to put me in a position of surrender, reliance, and trust, and confidence that I would have in Him. And so, therefore, God knows how to pick the very thing that will test really the deepest part of your heart to reveal where your love really lies. Where's your priorities? That's what God is saying. I hope you're getting what I'm trying to bring to you today. This is pertinent, and it is very important. God knows today our words really actually mean very little. God knows our words today are superficial at best. You know, we say a lot of things, but a lot of things we don't do and a lot of things we don't mean. Faith only gets tested when our feet begin to move. When we, you know, faith is not really revealed until you are in the process of moving forward. Abraham had to move forward, didn't he? He had to go to Moriah. He had to uh, saddle up the donkeys. He had to do everything and carry out the order. And you know what he turned and told his son and he told those who were with him? He said, God will provide. He didn't say, man, I don't know what we're going to do. I'm between a rock and a hard place. I, you know, I don't know what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And God's called me to do something that I don't want to do. And, and he didn't do that. He simply surrendered. Hear it. He surrendered and trusted God. And you and I must do that same thing today. So Abraham took action. And when things are going, you need this. When things are not going quite as well in your life, we have a tendency to withdraw ourselves. That's the worst thing you can do. You need to step up. You need to pray. You need to read the word. You need to get in church. You need to witness. You need to trust God and stop sitting and sulking and feeling sorry for yourself because it's not going to get you anywhere. So notice what he did. Um, he, he talked about, and he, it was four words that he used in those portions of Scripture. Rose, saddle, took, and the word went. And so what happens is this indicates an immediate response. He took action. Nowhere do we read that Abraham began arguing with God and bargaining with God and playing let's make a deal, God. Abraham did what God had asked him to do and that God had required of him. So where did Abraham then find the strength and the faith today to follow God when God really didn't make any sense? And let me tell you something today. He just had to reach out by faith and trust God. Abraham knew something. And you can know the same thing. He knew the power of God. And his power today can move mountains. His power today can work miracles. His power today can heal bodies. His power today can provide and make provision. So what we know about God will determine today how we respond to God. And if you've got a shallow walking relationship with God, your response is going to be that very thing. You have got to intensify and increase your relationship that you know God and that you're trusting him today. You know, faith is about believing the one today that you believe that is believable. God today can do those things today, and it's done by knowing and experiencing God. Sitting at home and feeling sorry for yourself, you don't get to know God by doing that. Or wanting people to feel sorry for you does not get you to that place. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, or 5.7 rather. He says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So faith is validated today. It's validated today by the steps we take, and today not by the butterflies that we feel. So faith then registers today through our actions and shows how serious we are about a, accomplishing and doing the will of God in our life. God delivered. Abraham reached beyond himself. Oh, this is powerful. He reached beyond himself and he believed God. And you and I have to do that same thing, don't we? It's not in what's going on around us or to us or whatever the situation may be. It's about today us reaching beyond ourselves and trusting God and knowing that God can do all things and he will do good. God does not do bad. He will do good and he will provide for you in a miraculous way today. 
you can bring him that rock and hard place that you're in, and he will give you the grace to get through it and survive it and to be blessed of the Lord. You know, God can make a way, and he does that, and he makes a way where there is no way. That's the power of our God. That's what our God can and will do. Are you trusting him for that today? Hey, are you surrendered to the Lord? Are you saved? A lot of questions, preacher. Well, first, you've got to get that salvation question answered and ask Christ to come into your heart and your life. And second, don't get in a position of having an attitude when you're going through a trial and blaming everybody and everything and questioning God. Just say, Lord, I'm going to trust you that you're going to bring good out of this and you call on him and look to him and trust him. You know what you're going to find? When you continue to praise him and trust him, you're going to come out of that that hard place, that rock and hard place a lot sooner. I pray today that you've been blessed by Viewpoint. That's a ministry. This is a ministry of Gethsemane Baptist Church. We surely appreciate the opportunity, a live TV and the other means that we bring you the Word of God. We're very thankful for that. And uh, we, we want you to come and worship with us here at Gethsemane Baptist. 411 Blue Ridge Street. We have worship times at 930 and 1130. We have the kitty care kit for the kids, teens and below, and they love it and they're enjoying it. We've been doing this now over a year and you know it's successful and we've seen tremendous results from it. And we want you to bring your family and enjoy this great church, a beautiful campus, easily accessible. You'll find the friendliest people in Lynchburg are right here at Gethsemane Baptist Church. And people will just do everything they can to make sure that you are blessed while you're here. And I would love to see you. I appreciate you tuning in and watching our programs. I would love for you to come and experience firsthand what God's doing in this ministry. I pray your week is going to be fantastic. I pray that you'll continue to look to the Lord and trust him in all things and know that our Redeemer liveth. And even when you're in a rock and a hard place, remember, someone's there with you today, and it is the presence of the Lord. And our God is a way-making God, and he will bring you through whatever you're facing today. Well, God bless you today, and again, thank you for tuning in. We're praying for you. You're important to this ministry, and I would love to see you this Sunday at Gethsemane Baptist Church. Have a fantastic week, and God bless you.